Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another uh, InRange TV video. Today we're taking a look at a selection of different variable powered optics that we've worked with for our What Would Stoner Do Project rifles. And, well, you actually ended up standardizing on a red dot. Yeah, I but did. for some reasons that may not apply to everybody. And so there are there are reasons why someone might want to have a variable power optic on a little a carbine version of the rifle like this. Yep. And then the variable power we decided is definitely the best option for a longer barreled version like this one. To give history for people that didn't watch the series through, yeah. you started off, I started off with a hollow sun and a magnifier. Yep. Which by the way, I still standardize on, but yep. that's a separate video. We're going to have a video specifically about the red dot configuration. Yeah. Um, you started off with a primary arms 2.5x fixed magnification optic. Right. That didn't, nah, it wasn't sufficient. The goal was to find middle ground between the best of two worlds, and there wasn't one there. Yeah, that wasn't it. So we immediately realized, all right, why are we defying this? The reality is variables are a thing. Yep. We had had past experiences with some low-cross variables we didn't like. Just because variables are popular doesn't necessarily no. mean they're bad. No, but we had we have on the, on InRange done some variable work with some of the lower-end uh, variables on the market, and we didn't really like them. Right. We found them to be not really 1x, not really 4x, not really 6x, some strange visual problems. Stuff that just wasn't there. So for this, the idea was, let's take a look at some proper high quality variables. Let's go and legit with this. What's gonna work best and what doesn't work? Right, so we wanted, we knew we wanted magnification of variable. We didn't know if we wanted one to four or one to six or one to eight. Yep. And all of those come at different cost and price points. So we kind of split the middle and did all of them. Yep. We didn't go one to eight, but we did go one to four with the Trigicon one to four AccuPoint. Yep. We went one to six with the Viper, uh, Vortex Viper PST Gen 2. And we also got on loan from Brian Nelson. Thank you, Brian Nelson, for doing this. Uh, a Mark VI loophole one to six. Yeah. Uh, Brian Nelson's the guy that ran Red October 2017, so cool guy. Yeah. Helped us kind of do some optical testing. Before we go there, one thing real quick. Mm -hmm. The variable market's incredibly huge. It is. There's stuff that's 50 bucks. There's stuff that's 5,000 bucks. And we're going to hear in the comments, why did you not test this one, that one, this one, this one, that one, that one, this one. I like that one. And it's true. They might all. There might be many of these on the market that are exceptional. We can't do them all. So we tried to do one of th these three as a representation of the market as a whole. And one of our main guidelines, which doesn't apply to a lot of people, looking for variables, it's weight. Oh, that's a good point. Um, a lot of the other stuff out there is substantially heavier than the three that we're looking at here today. And we did look at weight as a substantial component of that. Yeah. That being said, the Vortex is a pig. It is. Um, yeah. The Trigicon AccuPoint is on the other end, not being a pig for being it's a variable. remarkably light. And this one's in the middle when you take off this incredibly heavy mount from Lupul. Yeah. Uh, but, so, the reason we did a variable on the carbine, as opposed to just having my red dot, is we wanted to accelerate the process. So we right. wanted a variable on this and a variable on that, and we changed them off here and there because we wanted to be able to test multiple variables at the same time. Right. Yeah. So the basic conclusion we came to is all three of these scopes are quite good. Mm -hmm. However, they all are best for specific niche applications. And all three of the niches that these apply to are within the overall realm of what we wanted these rifles to do. It's a question of what, you know, this, this rifle is something that can be used up very close, and yeah. it can be used up out to seven eight hundred yards yep what do you anticipate using yours for primarily and that will kind of dictate which of these scopes would be most appropriate yeah if you decide to go with a variable versus a red dot config for a cqb type rifle why would you pick this variable versus that variable and each of them sort of has they're all usable in that guise but they each have their kind of better application so let's start with the trigicon okay uh, oh spoiler trigicon's best up close vortex is probably the best balance yep and the loophole's best at long range. I would agree with all those statements. So let's start with the, the AccuPoint, and why is it best up close? Well, a couple of reasons. One, I think when you start dealing with a variable that advertises itself as having a 1x setting, meaning mm -hmm. 1x optical, you should be able to go through, look through that with both eyes open, yep. and not have, and have sufficiently less, a sufficiently small amount of visual aberration in your one eye, that mm -hmm. having both eyes open allows you to use the optic effectively like a red dot. Right. And so I actually, personally, being that this is a closer range oriented rifle, I think the 1X is the most important feature of the variable. Right. The force cool, you want it for identification, you want to be able to see a target at range, but I'm going to more often than not have this at 1X. And when it's at 1X, when I have both eyes open, what's the eye relief? What's the eye box? How forgiving is this when I bring it up quick or in a weird awkward position, how hard is it for me to acquire that site or that virtual red dot and get hits at range or close range right. without having to like fish for my site picture? And the Trigicon was the best of all the scopes that we tried. So exceptionally so that I actually, once I had this and was using this, I, I would say that this is 95% as good as a red dot. I yeah. mean, it is that close. Yeah. And so there's still a reason I stuck with the red dot, which we'll talk in a different video. But if you're going for a variable that you want to have the functional equivalency of a red dot at 1x, 
I have not seen better than this. And on top of the the geometry issues, that also has by far the best lit reticle as a stand-in for a red dot. Because it's a rather large triangle, I don't remember the exact MOA, we can get that later, it really does show up quickly. Yeah, it's How a it, big dot and it's easy to acquire. It what, works. When I bring this up like that, as quickly as that, both eyes open, I have that dot there. It's yep. there and obvious. It feels like looking at a 4 MOA ML2 type aim point. Yeah. Um, and as a result, it's right there. The eye box is extremely forgiving. The eye relief is extremely forgiving in all different weird positions. It's just there. In fact, you can even be off center and only have part of the optic showing. So when you're looking through, it kind of looks like a half moon. Yeah. Which is, you know, normally when you have a half moon type thing, you can't get a sight picture. This one's so, so friendly to that, that I'm only seeing half, half of what I can see through the scope and I can still see the red dot. Yeah. And get a hit doing it. Yep. That's why I'm saying it's 95% as good as a red dot. On top of that, it has a couple other really cool features going for it as applied to our What Would Stoner Do project specifically. Those. Namely, it's the lightest by a long shot of it any is. of the scopes that we're looking at. Yep. And it is illuminated, but has no electronics and no battery. Being Trigicon, it's got tritium for exactly for when there's essentially no light. Yep. But it also has this little fiber optic light receptacle that then feeds to it to light it up. On top of that, one of the things that people have had problems with with ACOGs is you'll see tape on ACOGs or because mm -hmm. it's too bright, especially in places like Arizona. You can actually adjust the amount of ambient light by dialing the uh, light receptor down or up. So you can actually adjust your ambient light receptiveness in whatever yeah. conditions you're in. You can adjust the brightness despite it having no Better word than receptiveness. But, <laughs> but the point is, is that you don't have to be too bright or too dim. You can actually adjust it. And then when you have no light, you've got the tritium. Right. This means... No batteries. Right. This, this, this That doesn't sound like a big thing, but at uh, Tiger Valley, my battery died on this thing, and we yeah. had to fumble around and change it, and I beat the crap out of the cover here trying to unscrew it. Mm -hmm. Everything got beat up at Tiger Valley. With this, you always, you know, this or that, you always have to make sure, oh, I'm putting it away. I have to make sure I turn the, the thing off, make sure it doesn't get bumped and turn on. With that, you just don't have to care. No thinky involved. Yeah. I mean, literally, screw it down to 1x. Throw it back in the safe, throw it in the car, pick it up, pick it up, put it down. When you're done at the, after the match or the range or wherever you're doing, put it in the corner. Don't worry about it. There's a lot to be said for It's that. always there and ready to go. You don't have to turn it on, turn it off. When yeah. you need it, it's there. Yeah. That is a huge, huge advantage amongst the weight reduction and the clarity of the 1X. That no battery requirement makes this, in my opinion, of all the variables I've dealt with, if I was going to go at this point, me personally, for mm -hmm. what I need it to be, it's this one for sure. Now, before it sounds like... Yeah, this optic can do no wrong. It does have some downsides. It does, yeah. Two, basically, and they both apply to shooting at long range. The uh -huh. first is it's only a four power magnification, uh, which does matter, especially for trying to identify a target. Um, it didn't, if you just look through them, the difference between four and six doesn't seem that much until you actually try to apply it in the field. Yeah. When, boy, you know what, being able to go from four up to six power really does make a difference. It does. And then the other thing is, because this has this, it, the reticle on this is this nice big German post and triangle. Well, the downside of that is there are no stadia lines. You get no help with this thing. If I want to make a shot at three, four, five, six hundred yards, it's all going to be guesswork or estimation. Well, that same thing that makes that nice big German triangle and post good for being an ersatz red dot exactly. is the same thing that makes it not great for precision shots at range. Yeah. Because you have this big giant triangle and post and nothing to gauge off of. So you know the size of the triangle and you can use it for some rough estimation. You can know the bottom of the triangle, the top triangle, in relation to the, the ballistic solution you're looking for. But when you're trying to aim at 425 yards at half a man-sized target, and there's a crosswind. Guess what? All you got is uh, ah, about that much off the triangle, maybe that much right. That's really all you got. And so someone like you who has a lot of practice shooting long range, you've got 10 years of NRA high power, you can pull that off fairly well. You know, I don't want to, you always want to cheat if you can. <laughs> yes. And an excellent reticle that allows you to hold off using the reticle to do a cheat at a known distance is always the what you want. Right. But if you have enough keep of enough experience with your scope and your understanding of your ballistic solution, you could use a German post and triangle to get reasonably effective hits on reasonably sized targets without it, but it's not doing you any favors. can be done, but it's handy. It's not doing you any favors. However, again, this is what we talked about at the beginning. This scope is optimized for shooting up close. Mm -hmm. um, the middle range option mm -hmm. is what we ended up with, which I think we pretty much decided is probably the best solution for this rifle. Let's say we went back and forth. You, I should say, went back and forth between the Mark VI and that Viper. I can't remember, Viper, Razor, the 1-6 to six Vortex. Yeah. Um, you went back and forth on that quite a bit. I did, because I really have fantasies about this being a long-range rifle. Which it isn't. 
It is not. It is capable to get hits yeah. at distance, but it's not intended. We went through this in the beginning of the project. Right. DMR versus rifle. Right. DMR is a separate project. Part of this issue comes from the places where we have to actually use these rifles don't include a lot of serious long range shooting. We're talking not usually more than about 400 yards. Hard as hell two gun. You would have been way better off with that than you were that Farther. fixed optic. Yes. Yeah. Um, and in great. fact, one of the things that kind of played into my, my debate over these was this would have been the best for probably the best for some, well, would have been the best for some elements of this. We'll get into that more. Let's keep going on the anyway, vortex. Um, what, so that this adds some weight. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of weight. It's a pig. Yeah. 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 Um, optical clarity is really good. Uh, it is not quite as forgiving of eye position as the Trijicon. The red dot in it, th this has a reticle that has holdover stadia, um, mm -hmm. elevation stadia lines to allow you to get a more accurate shot at long range. Traditional crosshair is with a dot in the middle that they call a fire dot. Yeah. And that fire dot is sufficiently bright that you can actually use it in Arizona. You can see it. But it's like looking at a 1MOA dot. It's not, it's, it's bright enough, but it's not as bright as what you'd want to do fast acquisition right. at speed. In a shoot house, that's a lot better. This, yeah, the dot shows up, you can pick it up. And what's nice is the dot's always around. Even if you have a poor cheek weld on the rifle and a poor, you know, your, your position through the scope isn't optimal, you'll still see the red dot. That's a good point. The that way helps. that fire dot lights up, you can kind of be, like I said with this, you don't have to have be perfectly behind the scope to see the dot. In fact, the red dot still appears even if uh, the actual image is completely obscured. Oh, so even if I'm so far off that the whole scope is black, I still see a red dot in the middle. So you then again are bendening your friggin' Vortex fire dot. Well, my point there is not that it's usable in that position, it's that the dot never disappears. You can still perceive it. Right. Cool. Um, the six power really does make a difference. It does. Uh, the ability to actually properly calculate a long range shot. If you are planning to shoot at longer ranges, mm -hmm. this is definitely an improvement over the Trijicon. Yep. But at the same time, it's slower up close because you have a little less forgiveness. It, um, it doesn't do that both eyes open with no distortion trick quite as well. Mm -hmm. It's good. You can do it, but it's not quite as good as the Trijicon in that role. One of the things that I think comes up with using reticles for precision shooting at distance is dependent on the type of precision shooting you're doing. Yeah. If you're sitting absolutely. with no time stress or any other artificial or real world stress and you know that is exactly 450 yards. And you know that. Mm -hmm. And you know your holdover. And you have your reticle. And you train your thing. And you get zeroed in at 450 yards. And the target presents itself at 450 yards. And you have that reticle to use it. And you take the shot and get the hit. That's an entirely different thing than, oh no, run outside that car. Run up four flights of stairs. There are targets at indeterminate distances. Shoot them. If you don't immediately somehow have the ability to football field estimate 400-ish yards, right. having a reticle that gives you stadia lines to hold off 400 exact yards doesn't help that much. It still turns into what you do with this, which is, looks like about 400, tat, 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 which right. any scope lands up into that, because yes. that's a shooting problem. But if you do know the range, yes, this allows you to go, I'm going to want to use the third reticle down, the third line down. Correct. Absolutely. Um, so, I don't know, there's not, doesn't seem like there's as much to say about this one, because it really does fill that middle ground now, fairly it, well. A couple things. It yeah. took a beating, and it did not lose zero. Yeah. Now, we've heard from some people, we've had comments that people have seen these Vortex scopes not be as durable as they'd like them to be. I kind of beat the crap out of this one. The this cover on this side is all dented up. Quite literally smashed. Yeah. And th we were not gentle on this at all. And at least with our sample set of one, this Vortex scope has been 100% resilient. There's been no issues with it yeah. whatsoever. Adjustment's easy. The scope, yep. there's nice covers for that. That's a good thing. Yep. Um, there's not a lot of people making these quick throw levers for the Vortex. And yeah. we had a plastic, fantastic garbage yeah, one on there yeah, yeah. well it was not great but we got a really cool lightweight in fact it's mm -hmm. almost lighter than the plastic one might was. be yeah uh, one of the one of our supporters from finland yeah. saw that he goes oh man don't use that plastic john <laughs> he goes i make a throw lever for the vortex and he sent us one very cool we'll link to him in the description below so if you need yeah. one for your vortex this is the guy to get it from and it's a fantastic throw lever that's actually made out of aluminum yep i've got a metal one a metallic one on the um trijicon that's actually from trijicon and people will ask are those throw levels valuable yeah they are they are because you need to be able to go, and you want to be able to go. And you didn't always go from one to six, either. No. In fact, at uh, Tiger Valley, mm -hmm. we never had target presentations that were more than, what, 300? There was a couple past three, but yeah. Not many. Yeah. Um, I never went beyond, I think, three and a half power. Yeah. Um, so, 
there was no target serious target identification at very long range that would have necessitated the six power. Our two our, the two hundred yard stage had the most target identification, and that was identifying numbers on a piece of paper right. moving across back and forth. Yep. I was able to see the numbers with my three X fixed uh, magnifier. Yeah, and I did that at three and a half power. Yeah. For me, something like that, two hundred yards identify the target. You don't know where the target's going to appear in your field of view becomes a balance of magnification to identify versus field of view to be able to see that something is there that you have to identify. It was very interesting to note that my vortex, which is also vortex, a 3x magnifier behind my red dot, had a greater field of view than you at 3x in that scope. A far larger field of view. Which is weird yeah. because when I was on the magnifier, I could see the whole field of fire yeah. and I never had to get off the scope to see the targets moving. Your field of view was constrained enough that you had to look up and then go down on the scope, even though we were at very similar magnification yeah. settings. That's just part of scopes. Yeah. So, Let's go to the one, while it is a good scope, we did not choose oh, it. The Mark a, 6 loophole. It's a fantastic scope. The problem for our purposes is that this is really optimized for long-range shooting. Yeah. Um, the reticle in it is fantastic for long-range shooting because it has not just um, elevation holdovers and windage holdovers in the main center line. It actually has this waterfall of, you, you've got a curve of, here is a 10 mile an hour wind at 2, 3, 350, 4, 450, whatever. They call it the CMR reticle. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and so I think there are three wind, I think it's 10, 20, and 30 miles per hour going in each direction. And so this really is a thing where you can go, okay, it's, we got a 20 mile an hour perpendicular crosswind and the target's at 400 yards. So I want, da, 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 first, of, first of all, the stadia lines go down to 1200 meters yeah. and they have windage out to 20 miles an hour. Okay. So in theory, the reticle in this is designed for you to be able to take a 20 mile an hour shot crosswind at 1200 meters. And you know what? That's exactly what I what would have been great at Hard as Hell 2 guns. It's also got a range finder on the top left, yep. and it's got stadia lines going left and right across the standard zero, plus your horseshoe with a dot in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Hard as Hell, when we had a significant crosswind mm -hmm. and a very small target at three or 350 meters, this would have been great. That would have been the ideal scope for that specific situation. Mm -hmm. Now, the downsides of this are it's heavy, um, it is battery powered, and the dot in it kind of sucks. The dot is the worst dot. Yeah. As a red dot, if you had to put this at 1x and use this for the CQB red dot roll, this was the worst of the three. Right. Yeah. Um, that dot, you have to be exactly lined up perfectly behind that scope for the dot to appear. If you get even a little bit off center with your eye box, the red dot just boop, goes away. And the reason for that is this is this is Trigicon, which is a different deal entirely. It's a fiber optic tritium light. Lit up. That's a fire dot. Mm -hmm. This is a etched reticle that's illuminated. And so when you're anywhere off of a perfect eye relief, that red illumination just goes away. Yeah. And it was barely bright enough to use it all anyway. It was, yeah, of dubious brightness. Now that said, the horseshoe is pretty big to pick up without the dot. It is. Yeah, yeah. maybe you don't necessarily need the dot, but the dot's nice up close. Mm -hmm. it, it's nice to have something to really easily draw your eye to. I like, um, the, I like the way you say that. It's hard to understate that when you're moving through stuff quick and you're trying to acquire stuff fast, there's something about that red glowing thing that draws your eye into getting a quick hit. Yeah, that's true. Now, the optical quality of that is probably the best of all of these. It it's a fantastic piece of glass. It is optimized for long-range shooting. And the conclusion we've come to is that's really kind of the least important element of these rifles. Uh, be able, being able to shoot beyond three to 400, just maybe it's a, an artifact of what, we're, what we have access to and the environments in which we're using these rifles. Sure but it's not something that really has a lot of application for us. But I would also say that if you look at real world examples, for the most part, that's kind of reflecting reality. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, they do make a one to six version of this AccuPoint. We did not look at that. That may have some value. I've heard that it has a little, the eye relief's not quite as good as the one to four. So maybe this in a one to six would help you with targeted identification, but it still wouldn't help you with hold offs. Right. Because it's the same stadia lines or lack, yeah. or lack thereof. Yeah. So. It's an interesting problem. I think, in my opinion, the best goal for this, for the carbine, would be if you do not want to go red dot magnifier or red dot plus night vision, I cannot understate, overstate how much how good this scope is. Yeah. This is a winner. The Trigicon 1-4 AccuPoint is phenomenal. You don't see a lot of them in the competition field. I don't know why, but this is a fantastic scope. The 1X is excellent. The red dot or the red triangle is excellent. Yep. The optical clarity is excellent. The weight is excellent. The lack of batteries is excellent. Across the board. The only thing I thought would be neat, and we kind of ran out of funding, would be to put a QD mount on this, hmm. like a LaRue yeah. QD, and then put a QD mount on your red dot, and then you've kind of got this op mod thing where you can go red dot today, Trigicon tomorrow, and put it on based on your mission requirements. Yeah. That'd be neat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for if you want to have the rifle with the intent of using it at longer range, especially if you want to be able to 
observe. If you want to use something like this for jackrabbit hunting, mm -hmm. and you want to be able to, you, these things are accurate enough that you can shoot them out to four, five, six, seven hundred meters. The six power scope really does help for identifying and scanning and figuring out what you're doing as well as making those longer range Oh, and if shots. you're talking about varmiting, magnification's yeah. king. I yeah. mean, six X is at the low end. People right. varm it with 20 X or higher. Well, yeah. But still, I agree with you, it's totally possible. On a, on a very practical rifle like this, a six power makes a lot of sense. Totally does. So I don't know that we'd really, I think if you're in a position where you're going to actually be making use of the, the capabilities of that scope, I don't know that you're quite in our what would stoner do realm as much anymore. If you wanted to do more precision <clears throat> shooting, or I would say actually, and I know that these are very popular in three gun, both the Vortex and the Mark VI. Mm -hmm. If you were a three gun guy or a precision shooter, this makes a lot of sense. When you go to hard as hell and they present the four inch plate at 300 yards at, in a wind, in a crosswind, yeah. the reticle in here makes a lot of sense. It does. Yeah. Um, uh, but and or if you're doing precision shooting where you're like bench resting or bipod shooting or or hunting, mm -hmm. um, this loophole is a definitely excellent optic for that. For our more practical tactical running gun, mm. it's going to fall somewhere between these two. I think. Mm, yeah, pretty much. So in summary, the in range stamp of Hubris absolutely gets stamped hard and fast onto the <laughs> loophole. Um, excuse me, on the Trigicon one to four AccuPoint. Yep. Absolutely, one hundred ten percent approved. Yep. The Vortex, same thing. Yeah, I, I see nothing wrong with using one of these guys. Uh, the, the debate between the two comes down to what you plan to use the rifle for. Absolutely. And before, we forgot to mention one thing. On both of these scopes, we are actually using the Aero Precision oh, yes. Lightweight Mount. Yeah. Which comes in, I think, at three ounces. Three ounces. It's the obvious choice for an application like this. We had no problems with them coming loose in either gun. Uh, it's a mount. You tighten it down and it just works. It's not QD, but it is light enough. The lightweight the lightweight capabilities of that mount made it viable yeah. for our project. And if you do put witness marks on it, like you may not see on the camera, but I've done witness marks on my screws. Mm -hmm. um, believe it or not, if you'd witness that and witness mark where it goes on your pick rail, the reality is if you take it off and tighten it down to the same witness marks, it's, it's really almost close. the same thing as a QD mount. It's yeah. just you need a tool to do it. Yeah. So at any rate, uh, kind of neat that we had an end result in that we do have two variables that we're approving in the project, the Trigicon yeah. 1 to 4 AccuPoint and the Vortex Viper 1 to 6 Gen 2 PST, both of them are good to go. There's no reason to not go for any of these. CQB out to three, 400 meters, this scope's good to go. Yep. You need a little more precision, you want the you want the 6X, and you still want a reasonable red dot, Vortex is good to go. Yep. You want more precision, don't care about the 1X as much, and don't care about a red dot, loopholes, good choice. to go. None of these are bad choices, we're just officially, what would Stoner do approving the Trigicon and the Vortex. Yep, cool. Guys, thanks for watching this. Hopefully this is valuable to you in your optics selection process. As I said earlier, we're gonna do another video totally about the red dot config with yeah. the magnifier because that has different tactical and practical applications above just an optic. Yes, it does. So that's another conversation, but hopefully you find this valuable in selecting optics for your scope or rifle, excuse me. It doesn't have to be one of these, but at least the concepts we're applying here apply across the board. Yep. Um, if you like this kind of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. It was, allows us to do things like acquire a Trigicon AccuPoint 1 to 4 and a Vortex, and a Vortex to do this kind of review. Um, so that's incredibly important. We are truly only viewer supported. So that's all to you guys. Um, if you can't support us that way on Patreon, please just subscribe to the channels. And most importantly, even more importantly than any of the above, share the content because the AI bots aren't doing it. Thanks a lot.